That's where you begin. And when you begin, don't stop. You belong at the top, whether other people or you think so or not. You've got to use what you've got to take you higher. And when you get there, baby, it's going to be fire. Too hot to handle, too cold to hold, you're in control. Keep striving for your goals and go get it. I wrote that in 2007, speaking before an audience of over 300 teenagers in Chicago, Illinois, for the academic trio program. And the crux of Go Get It was an opportunity for them to look inside themselves and not only see the gift and the potential that lies within, or either that was lying dormant, but to look into their futures and see so much more that God had available for them. And so, as I encouraged them in 2007, that following December, God encouraged me. Because in 1998, I have the distinction of being a former Miss Texas Southern University. I was the first plus-sized queen in that school's history. And at that time, we were only 52 years old. And when I say plus size, I don't mean size 14. I mean size 24. I don't know who came up with 14 and 16 being plus size. It is not. I'm trying to get back there now. We're talking about size 24, 235 pounds. Yes, me. Miss Texas Southern University, queen of one of the largest historically black colleges in this nation. And when I was preparing for the talent competition, I wanted to, of course, you know, focus on my gift. And I said, well, what should I do? So I looked at Nikki Giovanni, awesome Sora. I said, yeah, that was wonderful, but everybody's heard ego tripping. So then I thought about Maya Angelou. And I said, oh, yeah, I, I like Maya, the phenomenal woman. I, everybody's done that, too. And of course, what happens for me when I can't find something, I write something. And so I wanted to write something that encapsulated every strong, beautiful, independent woman that I'd ever met. I wanted to think about making sure that I projected an image of strength, an image of empowerment and distinction. And of course, when I thought about women like that, the first place I went was my mama. And I said, what could I do that would make my mother proud, that would be exemplary and representative of her and the woman she's raised me to be? And so I came up with a poem entitled Diva. And that poem was actually recited for the first time at the Miss Texas Southern University pageant in 1998. That poem helped catapult me into that crown, which catapulted me into other engagements where I went throughout the city, and I'm still doing that, and also all over the country, speaking to young ladies and youth about empowering themselves, but more importantly, about waking up the diva within. And when I say diva, I'm not talking about some self-absorbed prima donna. I'm talking about somebody who's self-assured, someone who loves herself, and who also loves herself enough to love others and demand that others love her back. And so, just the other day, someone threw a question my way and asked me what a diva is supposed to be. I started to reach for a dictionary, but found it was quite unnecessary. Since you see, this happens to be my area of expertise. So I sat her down and I told her to heed the words I have spoken. For although many are called, only a few are chosen. A diva is a woman of distinction. She stands out in any crowd. Her presence is so dazzling, you'll treat her like royalty. And even those of you who hate me eventually will have to bow down. A diva is an individual. She's not afraid to be who she is, big or small, short or tall. Confidence is the key by which she lives. Real beauty lies in the beholder's eyes, but your beauty is a shame if you don't have a brain. See, you'll be impressed with my mind and not just my behind.